plays work today. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, take it away, son. <laughs> okay, I'll... I'll go. Power still hasn't come back when we make our way downstairs. Tricky, considering the stairs so the attic are a bit odd. Yes, we're celebrating. Yes, sorry for the delay, guys. We got it. Yay. Fifth attempt to work. One misstep and anyone might end up slipping and falling. You're lucky if that's all that happened to you. With the stairs this deep, a broken neck is a likely outcome. Thankfully, Isabella's here to guide me through the darkness. She knows this place better than anyone. After all, in spite of all the misfortunes it has brought to us. Okay, enjoy your food, Smooth. Enjoy your Careful. food. Careful, the floorboards over there aren't very sturdy. I thank you. Damn board, I'm stepping on creaks and suddenly breaks. The piece is falling somewhere with a dull, dull thud. Oh shit. Scumbag wouldn't be too happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? His butler just tried to kill you. Yeah. Oh my Ow. god, I cannot. What? I cannot, I still cannot believe the butler would betray us like that. I mean, to be fair, we were breaking into the house, so he felt like he was just doing his job, but that was a little too much, a little too extreme. Yeah, I get that. Like, he seriously, like, Ash almost died. That was horrible. Mm hmm. See? I told you so. You never listen to me. <laughs> they renovated the whole mansion and they can't even replace one tiny part of the house. Yeah, he has a point. Mm hmm. Why don't you file a complaint to BRC then? I'm sure they'd be thrilled to hear it. You know, it was such a rush job. Outside, the winds have intensified. Even from here, I can hear the gust battering the window in the attic. Ooh, the sound design. Eesh. It makes you wonder why up until now the only person we've encountered from this house is the butler. Although to some degree that makes sense, he is in charge of running the place. Where are the other servants though? In this store, wouldn't anyone want to stay inside? A likely assumption is they're all asleep. The road I've taken doesn't really pass by the rooms they've likely assigned as the servants' quarters. However, they have also heightened security. I brushed it off earlier. Maybe they'll be posted a lot closer to where the master's rooms are. But the second floor is devoid of anyone as well. As if every inhabitant of this place has suddenly disappeared overnight. Ooh, I wonder if the, the ghost did anything to them. Hmm. More importantly, where is that scum scumbag? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Yep, my thoughts exactly. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're here, right in the effing middle of it, of it, makes me all the more queasy. And that feeling only escalates once we reach the landing and Isabella swings the door open. She pauses abruptly right in the doorway that I am almost run into her. A look of confusion in her uh, as she looks wildly around the place, wordlessly taking in her surroundings. With each turn and shift of her eyes, her shoulder only grows tenser and a look of apprehension slowly dawns on her. Isabella, what are you... We aren't supposed to be here. Sure enough, when I look up, we're standing right in the kitchen. Hot spans and all. 
So wait, if we just came down the stairs, we should be in like the main hallway. Yeah. Hmm. The speeches. Oh! In one corner, Zach and Rebecca watch is almost a surprise to see us. Hey, the whole gang's here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see, Ash, you should have just brought everybody with you. Yes. Meg McCullough had also with them. Of course, she didn't listen to me even if I've already exceeded the 15 minutes we've agreed on. Although color and strength seem to have already returned to her, enough for her to be able to stand unassigned, unassisted, sorry. The empty plate on the corner appears to have played a part on that. Good news, I guess. As for the other two, however, relieved as I am that they have the sense to wait and not venture deeper into the mansion, I can't keep but to roll my eyes at both of them. I can't keep? That's weird. I think they meant help. Yeah. Zach, I said four hours. <laughs> I, I, I know, but Isabel asked and... Come on, bro, you know I ain't a very good liar. <laughs> <laughs> he should be thankful. If they hadn't shown up when they did, he'd be dead. Yeah. And it didn't even occur to you to stop her? We all tried, all right? She was out the door before we could say anything. And how did you guys even get in here? All of them exchange a look. One that I absolutely don't like. In the end, it's Isabella who speaks up, albeit with a bit of hesitation. We... we heard someone scream, Ash. It let us hear. With a warning, the door behind the slums shut. Oh boy. Uh oh. We need to get out of here. Screw right. I need to get these people out of here. Lucky we're in the kitchen and we have two ways out the back door and the cellar offers. Except the hatch won't budge when I pull at it, and neither does the back door. As if Saki has a lucky for me on the other side. Mm. Oh no. The ghost has you all where she wants you. Or is it Luke? Maybe both. Yeah, or maybe both. Oh god, what if Luke is working with the ghost all this time? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Holy crap. Hmm. Zach also gives it a few tries, but even with a big guy's strength, he won't open. Dang. There's a long boat of silence in which we all simply look at each other, likely sharing the same thoughts. We're trapped. Yep, you're right, twin. They went from out of the frying pan and into the fire. <laughs> yeah. Something or someone has intentionally led us here. F. In that same moment, once a realization dawns in, something shifts again. Smooth. What the old face? He, he's just saying that. He's never seen that part of my life. <laughs> That was a very brief time in middle school, high school-ish. It didn't last very long. <laughs> okay. Also, I like the icons of Pokemon there. Yeah, very cute. Oh no. Oh. Oh god, it's so red. Blood. Okay, together, Ashton and Isabella carefully made their way downstairs. However, instead of a hallway, the kitchen greeted them instead. Before they could understand what was happening, it slammed shut behind them and the whole mansion had started to shift. Maybe it's a 
mirage or something. Mm, maybe. Like, like a oasis in the desert, but in actuality isn't there. Mm -hmm. An illusion. In every nook and cranny, over every surface and in every inch of the floor. This time, unlike the first one I've seen, it remains and gradually the whole room begins to reek of the familiar metallic scent, sharp and suffocating. Around us, every old kitchen, including the top walls, has started to rattle and swirl. Oh my god, that's wow. loud. That is loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The sounds from outside, foreboding rumble of thunder, and even the howling winds have begun to fade away, replaced by whispers, shouts, and cries of pain. Oh. Random, <laughs> random for four minutes. I cannot do accents. Uh, well, I mean, does it count that Sign is speaking and she has an accent? <laughs> yeah, does that count? <laughs> because this is Sign's turn for reading. If if you don't accept that, then uh, during my turn to read, I'll have to do an accent. Mm -hmm. That's going to be in a while, because right now it's Sign's turn. Uh, Twin says, quick, Ash and Zach, get behind Isabella and Rebecca. Of course you want to hear about it later, Smooth, of course. Uh, during my turn. Okay. <laughs> Alright then, during my turn, remind me and I will do an accent. Mm -hmm. Though inaudible, each beat and note bombards every crevice my head with vague images and sounds. There's no time to make sense of everything, however. Okay, I can hear that. Yep. I'm already shouting, fueled purely by adrenaline, barking out the orders and making a break for the door that leads to the next room, the dining. It should take us straight to the foyer when the main door is. Move! Run! Right in front of us, the mansion has started to change and we're in the thick of it. However, instead of a dining room, like it's supposed to open to... Oh. The bedroom welcomes us instead. Bruh. Oh God. This house needs to get burned down, y'all. Yeah, it's like that... Harry Potter, the Hogwarts, but it's worse because it's haunted. Mm -hmm. An image that lasts only but a second before blood begins to seep into the room. Again, even my country would be sick of seeing so much blood. <laughs> Filtering into the walls, trickling from every nook. Nook and cranny. Edgeworth. Every... What? <laughs> it says nook and cranny, so I'm like, Edgeworth! Yeah. Everywhere furniture shakes and every beam rattles. Oh god. Before we can even step back from the horror gradually unfolding in front of us, the door slams shut. I, I wonder if somebody would do a tally of every time Edgeworth says, Let's investigate every nook and cranny in those games. Like, damn, how many times did he say it? So much that even Nico B makes some jokes of it. Mm-hmm. What does he say? Every nook and butthole or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every nook and A low thought bringing a sense of dread and chill creeping up in each of us. 
Along with it, it's another realization. The whole place is reordering in its And with the door closed tight behind us, showing no signs of budging, even though, even through sheer force. There's no choice but to go forward and hope all goes that will lead us to an exit. Oh god. The office and it's already red. Yep. Until then, running is the only thing you can do. Spur by nothing but fear and a sense of desperation to live. It's useless, Ashton Frey. Oh gosh. Here's the voices. For each room we pass, it only becomes apparent that the house has no intention of letting us live. It lured all of us here and we've fallen for it. Now it's playing a little game with us, a sordid form of amusement. For whom? <laughs> Their laughter are the only thing we can hear. With every hole we, cro uh, we cross and door we slide open, the hope of finding an exit merely dwindles. At least Ash gets to die with his friends. Oh no. That would be horrible if this ending is like everybody dies. Yeah. The gun on my hip is useless here. I'm useless here. Some effing genius I am. Some effing person to trust I am. Smooth's like, so is this a ghost or. Yeah, it's a ghost, but I'm thinking she has control over the whole house too. All of those, they nothing in the face of the unknown. You finally figured it out. Huh, Ashton Frey. Just give it up. A polter guy, yeah, it seems like it. Hmm, could be. All of them will eventually die because of you. And you are going to die alone. <laughs> Shut your so, fucking mouth. So many story updates. You know it's true though. All of it. It's why all you can do is tell us to shut up. You don't want to hear a single word because you're already aware of it. You can't even admit it to yourself. Who's the coward now? But no matter how hard you try. You're not going to be able to save anyone. The more gruesome the place the bleaker our chances simply get. Oh no. Worse and, oh god. Words and screams fill our ears as we pass by. Words from a time and people long gone, laced with nothing but pure agony, calling out, reaching out to us. Their voices are almost too real as if we are not the only ones trapped here. That uh, there are others begging for release from this wretched place. Or maybe it's all just a show? A taste of what we'll, we will eventually be. Souls forever held captive in a never-ending nightmare. Of course, Smooth. <laughs> He's like, as long as I'm not the one playing, it's fine. Yeah, everyone is fine with them. Mother, I've done it, Mother. Take me with me, please. I can still hear her. She's here. Help me! Help me, please! Is this what the curse is? What it means for all of us? That the letter not a morbid cry for help, but an invitation? A beckoning for unsuspecting souls to be dragged into this place's horrors? To be put under centuries and centuries of torment and agony? 
suddenly dying a painful death seems preferable than enticing than ending up here living a tortured existence. Or perhaps it's all the same? Yeah, because if you die in the house, you might be trapped there forever as a spirit, mm -hmm. so I don't think you want to die there. Yeah. This again? I mean, this room? Mm hmm. Still, hope warms its way into me. Not an unusual thing for someone like me. But after going through countless doors and corridors, every little sign of hope I'm willing to cling to, as long as it'll get us out of here. We're back in the dining room again. How long have we been running? How long since we've left the kitchen? I would laugh if this was like, <laughs> if they're doing one of those moments of Scooby-Doo where they're running through the rooms back and forth and then the creature is chasing them. <laughs> At some point, I've lost track of time. With the windows bare tight, bar tight and the sounds lifting in the air, nothing but shouts and shrieks is, it's impossible to tell. Not that it matters when an end is in sight. Shells and furnishings bar the door, each stain with blood and gore. That if the situation isn't as desperate as it is, I'll find a different way out. Oh, that's weird. Mm. Oh, Smooth wants you to, <laughs> to be voicing for a vampire character. Wow, really? <laughs> well, if we ever play a game that has a vampire in, I'll be like, Sign, you're up. Yeah, I'll do it, even if it's a guy I'm doing. <laughs> but there's still a gap left at the topmost part for a person to go through. As long as you use the shells to climb, as long as you... It's an exit, all right. <laughs> From here, I can spy the familiar walls of the foyer. Relief. Only relief washes over me. Although my legs have been staying trained taut by all the running, and every bone and muscle in my body ache, there's only an easing. A sense of tension relieving while energy back flows through me again at the side of an end. No sooner I'm leading us out of it. Zach helps me call her first, assisting her up and through the gap, before giving a hand to both Rebecca and Anne Isabella. The moment the ladies are in, I know for him to go through. Go ahead. I'll watch your back. Surprisingly, he does that without any protest. Not that there's any need to. Sometime after entering this room, the whole place has calmed down. No wails, no whispers, just a silence too deafening. But I am not letting my guard down, until everyone's on the other side of this nightmare, safe. For all I know, this may just be a calm before another storm. Without further, without further incident, however, Zack makes it to the other side and I'm falling after him. However all this hush is, I turn my back from it and climb up. It's a tight fit, but I managed to squeeze myself in. It must have been even tighter for, for Zack, because he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> poor Zack. The knees remains though. Maybe it's the adrenaline still coursing through me or how easy everything has been after living through that nightmare, fleeting as it is. But for some reason, something is still nagging at me. Call it a detective's instinct or my training or what not. I have a feeling something's going to happen and catch us unprepared. Of course. Mm. 
unconsciously before dropping down on the better side of this dream. My hand shifts to the gun on my hip. Yes, be prepared. Yes. Insti has never failed me before. You say that, but there was a few instances where you did some dumb things. Yeah, like calling for the ghost in an elevator. And not bringing your gun with you, and and then tripping and falling like two or three times already. <laughs> yeah, like, what the heck, dude? Oh, the music. Yeah. At least the room isn't red. Yep. My feet haven't even landed firmly on the floor when... Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. Oh, this feels like a final boss moment. Okay, okay, Luke. Clearly, <laughs> he's being evil, what? clearly. Yeah. Repair your weapons because there'll be a boss fight. Yep. And save. Oh yes, getting jumped by the butler, yep. Mm-hmm. People these days, in my own home. Can you believe it? I feel so left out. We've been looking what? for you all this time, Luke. What the hell? Yeah. Also, where's Hana? Yeah, I don't know. A chill seeps into every vein in my body. All of a sudden, every ache, every pain returns to me. Hold and my knees threaten to buckle at the sound of his voice. Though it appears friendly, I know it is anything but. One does not spend investigating a man like him for over a year and holding a grudge against him, against him for more without knowing everything about him. His quirks, his habits, I'm familiar with all of them. I feel like we've been waiting for so long to see them face off, you know? Mm hmm And right now? Look, if you're right, is beyond peace. Shifting my gaze upwards is nearly too painful, knowing the danger. Not to me. But to those who have been lured in here by the curse. Oh, come on! Wow. He looks like a psycho right now. Mm-hmm. And alas again, where's Hana? Yeah. I'm surprised he would even point a gun at, at Marianne and Rebecca, because he knows them. Come on, dude. Maybe he's mainly pointing at uh, Zack and or Isabella or both. Or he's but just me... pure evil and doesn't care. I don't know. Yeah, or that. The handgun catches my eyes first. Next to that smarmy... Oh, ouch. I... You bit, bit your tongue? tongue. Yeah. Oof. Okay, okay I, I reread the sentence. The handgun catches my eyes first, next to the smarmy smile on his face while he holds McCulloch, Zach, Rebecca, and Isabella at gunpoint. Yeah, they did break into his home, but he does know them enough that he should be, like, not doing that, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually thought he had a crush on Rebecca, or, you know, I thought they were kind of cute, but now I'm like, mm, you're a piece of garbage yet again. If anything, this is an America welcome. Yep. <laughs> but they're in England. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm imagining America in England's home, pointing a gun at people. <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. It's sad enough to lodge a painful thorn up my throat. I've been too complacent. Complacent. Just switch the gun with a knife then. 
<laughs> to focus on other things, I've completely set aside the fact that sc the scumbag will not be too pleased to see us here without knowing our reasons. But even with those good intentions, curses and ghostly apparitions aside, we're still trespassing in his home. The question is, if he is even aware that the whole of his household has somehow disappeared and he might be the only one here. Likely not. F. Even with people he knows among the crowd, there's a significant effort in him not to simply shoot everyone in sight. And really, Daisy? Even you? What would Kylie say? Oh. Luke, this isn't what you're thinking. You have to listen to us. There's something going on here. Oh, a dinner murder mystery theater sounds fun. Hmm. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What about little Lily over there, then? What's your excuse? Checking back if your clients are doing okay? Is that it? Is this what this is? Oh, we're doing good, by the way. Honestly, I'm surprised. They really should have just knocked on the door first just to see if they could at least talk to him. Hmm. And I don't know about that. I don't know. At least I would have tried it. Even if he would have thought they were crazy. Listen, there are enough bullets for everyone. Just rush him. <laughs> Smooth. You don't care if half of them end up shot then? <laughs> and Sir, there's, fi there's five of them and six bullets. Of course he'll have enough. Yeah, that's true. He could have enough bullets if he's a good shot. Like, what if he's like an amazing shot and he just does BAM headshots to all of them and that's it. Like, he's the opposite of Stormtrooper and he has an amazing aim. Yes. Oh, please, what? Becca's right, sir. We need to get out of this place. You need to leave. Ta ta ta, a good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. Don't worry, I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for the rest of you. But really, now, I swear the people of this city need to be taught the meaning of privacy. This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? Luke, what the hell? Actually, he waves the handgun at them as he is just a mere toy and his words are no threat. The safety is off on his. Nothing stopping him from pushing through with his words. Call me paranoid, but at a slight gesture, I draw my own and level it at him. Finger on the trigger and I'm ready to release the safety catch in case things go south. Oh, snap. Oh, oh god, the face off. He's quick to train his own on me, though. And just like that, we're at the standstill. I can't help it. Sometimes I see Ash and his hair and everything. I'm, I remember when I first saw the, the pictures of the game, I thought he was a woman. <laughs> he does yeah, look he very is... feminine. <laughs> yeah, he is pretty, uh, pretty feminine. He's a pretty boy. Mm -hmm. Alright, after a long, desperate run in search of a way out, the house calmed down for some reason. An exit was finally in sight. Waiting on the other side, however, is... If you were ever at a standstill like that, you're just gonna shoot first. <laughs> now, now, feathers. Manners. Bad you're bad. in no position to be pointing that gun at people. Why don't you put yours down first, and then we'll talk about manners. Oh, he talks back. The gall! You know, your kind pisses me off so much. 
That's true, Twin. I mean, sometimes you really <laughs> don't let them get their whole monologue out, just shoot them. <laughs> Shooting him right now would be so worth it, with the way he stares at me like I'm a dumb pest. But this is what I've come here for. I'm not a murderer. As much as I loathe him, I'm not the kind who will kill people in cold blood for my own game or a gain or amusement. The law will bring him what he deserves one of these days. At the moment, however, we're all in the same boat with this curse, and he needs to understand that. The longer we stand here, the more time we're wasting and losing, something, something we don't have much of. But how can I convince him? This calm is so full of himself, prefers to hear the sound of his own voice more than those of people around him, no matter how much sense they make. Probably the only way I can make him listen is if I beg. Ugh. Yeah. No way in hell that's happening. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, that's a tough one. Yeah, because I feel maybe like the fact is maybe we do have to ask him to listen, right? Maybe I should eliminate the immediate danger first and disarm him. I mean, hmm. if we disarm him, what? Are you going to shoot his arm? Are you going to kick it out of his hand? What are you going to do? I think that would kill him. What if he kills him by accident? If yeah, it's, to... it feels too dangerous to try to attack him, you know? Yeah, and, and we can uh, reload if... Uh... He can always call a mulligan. Yeah, I, I don't want to try to disarm him and end up screwing up somehow. So let's at least try to talk things out, right? Yeah, that's what, what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, Twin is right. Don't trust Ash's actions, because Ash kind of <laughs> has a habit of screwing things up. Yep. Hey, I have a transit. Ah, no, I dormit. Bene. My life's not the only one at risk here, however. There's Zack. There's Rebecca. There's Isabella. McCall's here as well. <laughs> they had to be like, okay, let's check who's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all know unknowing victims to this effing curse. I'm in no position to pick who to save and who I should simply let die. I suppose my pride can take a few hits and can set aside my beef with this a-hole. Taking a deep breath, slowly, I lower my pistol. Yes. Though still on the edge and at ready, in case he does something, I do my best to assume a less aggressive stance. Yeah, let's let's talk to him, even though he's a jerk. Hopefully he'll listen mm -hmm. to reason. Mm-hmm. Listen, right. I need you to... Oh, swallow your pride. Yeah. You broke into my house, and somehow, somehow, you expect me to listen like a good little boy. Are you a bit touched in the head, Feathers? I'm not the one breaking laws here. Look here, fucker. If I wanted you dead, <laughs> I could have done it so many times already. <laughs> in fact, I can easily shoot you down right here, right now. And you won't be able to do a damn thing, even with that gun. <laughs> Get him. Yes. Suddenly he loves, almost howling in fact. I have to uh, just told him the best joke he's heard all his life. The only thing missing is for him to kill over and start rolling around the floor, all while I do my best not to suck him in the sorry end of my pistol. 
You have, we have guts, guts feathers. Me. You have guts. Did you hear what you just told me? You've just threatened me inside my own house. My own home. Come on, Rebecca. Just tell him. Do you want me to kick you in the balls again? Because I'll do it. <laughs> do it, Rebecca. We need you. Oh my god. Bring the book, boo, too. Right? Yeah, where's her book? She needs to get a book. You know what I'm thinking right now? In another lifetime, we would have probably gotten along well. No, I don't think you would have. <laughs> hmm. I think you guys would have been fighting all the time. Yeah. He's right on that at least. I might have ended up like him if I didn't have Professor Andrew, Rebecca, Zach and Isabella. One mistake and it would have been too late for me. With his laughter, it really rings all of those possibilities I could live, but have never been given the choice. All because I have other people with me. People who care. A sobering realization. But not so much when suddenly his chuckling stops. In two heartbeats, he marches towards me, grabs my collar, and aims his gun right at my head. Uh oh. Uh oh. Luke, no! Hey, now you two, I, I'm sure we can all talk about this first! At this distance, a slight flick of the finger on the trigger will be able to do more than kill me. What is it that you people really want with me? Hurry up and tell him already! Y'all are taking too long! This is the second time this week, and I'm really getting weary of this little game. Wait, second time this week? Hmm? I don't think second... I know what he's referring to. Second time? Um... Is that something we'll see during his chapter? Probably. Hmm. Did the NCA hmm. send you to apprehend me, or has somebody paid you off to kill me? Which one is it, Feathers? Mind what? you, my arm's getting tired. Better answer quick, if you don't want to beat the business end of this gun. I keep my eyes trained on him, in spite of the huge threat, threat he poses right now, because if there's anything people like him, like us, prefer it on honesty. You don't give that impression without keeping a solid eye contact. I'm not with NCA. I'm just here to help. There's something else in this house, and we're all in danger. You have to believe me, right? You need to let us go. You need to get out of here before it's too late. If you want to keep your sorry ass alive, you'll listen to people with more brain cells than you. <laughs> oh, yeah, she just had to add that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Why, you insolent! His finger moves, but I am prepared, my hand ready to reach up, disarm him, and knock him out. If I have to drag him out of this place unconscious to keep, to keep, him, uh, to keep him from suffering the face of every other person who has died from this curse, so be it. Yes, somebody knock him out and we just drag him out with us. <laughs> And we were able to disarm him. Yeah. He could be talking about Zack. I don't know. Where was all this confidence, Ash? Yeah. <laughs> However, before either of us can fire a shot of uh, tackle the other to the ground, another voice echoes through all the foyer. A small little thing compared to the storm raging outside. It rings above it, nevertheless, causing all of us to stop and turn. Is it Hannah? Oh no. Oh. Poor Hannah. Yeah. At the top of the staircase, Hannah writes them. Oh no. To make, to make matters worse, that things behind her, menacing. A rotten in hand, a rot firmly around her neck. Oh, we gotta save her. We don't, I'm scared she'll like push her down the stairs and she could even lose the baby or something. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. Ugh. 
she looks like death. <laughs> Pale and shaky, eyes are red with tears. We nearly don't hear her as she pleads. Nick, help me. Please. Outside, another streak of lightning flashes it, and a clap of thunder ripples across the sky. Achievement mm. lock in death grip. Oh boy. As if the as if this whole thing can get any more super? Mm-hmm. It's an acronym. Then... Of what? For uh fucked up beyond all recognition. Oh. Can get any more foobar than it already is. Oh, that's it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Achievement! A glimmer of hope! Oh my god, we're finally at Luke! Yes! Yes, finally! We're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel! Damn, what a cliffhanger, though! <laughs> yeah. In spite of the danger Luke Wright posed at the moment, Ashton lowered his gun and assumed an imploring tone towards the man he hated. Amidst the tense air, a voice suddenly echoed in the foyer. There, at the top of the grand staircase, stood Hannah Wright. Can we look at the flowchart? But, be but before that... Oh my god, his name is Lucille! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Still, that's Mitchell funny. Look right. That is funny. Maybe that, maybe that's why uh, the people call him Luke from Lucille. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, birthday August second. He's a Leo, thirty-one years old. Height hey, five like foot my eight. dad. He's a Leo too. Okay. Five foot eight, hundred seventy-three centimeters. Occupation: President and CEO. He's British, atheist, raised Anglican. Education: High school dropout, privately tutored. Likes bread pudding, dogs, wine, and absinthe. Piano playing, daffodils, money, women, and power. <laughs> well, he has dogs in the life, so eh. All right, a prostitute's son. Oh. He spent oh. his childhood roaming the streets begging or pickpocketing in order to avoid home. Home meant a too drunk mother and her equally drunk clients, some of who would take the to beating the child out of anger if he so much as looked at them wrong. Yeek. Oh. Now oh they're giving God, him my... a horrible backstory to make us feel bad for him. Yeah, now I feel bad for him a bit. That meant he was always in trouble in one form or another. Nothing was done to correct it until, in a sober moment, his mother found out about the abuse and promised to take better care of her son. Luke was happy for a while, but his mother's habits led to an early grave and left him orphaned until his biological father, a businessman with no legitimate heir, sought him out. He was trained to inherit right enterprise, but along the way got mixed up with illegal activities. That put the company in a bad spot after his assistant ran off with a large sum of dirty money. Bankruptcy would have been inevitable if he hadn't married Hana. Interesting. Hmm. And now let's see the flowchart. I'm I know scared to look at it. <laughs> yeah. So we're here at the beginning. Ash, we got only 17% of his storyline. Wow. Wow. That okay, means that a whole lot of it has to do with them being alive or not, you know? Mm hmm. Let's see looks. It's never ending. Super long. Uh. uh... Uh, 
Oh my god. Oh, now I see. Mm. This little red dot is how long yeah. this is. Oh my god. Oh my god. How long are we going to be playing his chapter? I thought his chapter was shorter, like three hours. Yeah, I thought I heard that. Oh my gosh. I, I don't like looking at the at the, the tree. It's too scary. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that uh, person took uh, another uh, path when it, when everyone was dead. Yeah. I mean, with more people dead, I'm sure it gets a little shorter. Mm-hmm. To say that I'm scared of what's happening is a gross understatement. And Smooth named his pull stick Lucille. Oh, that's your weapon, Smooth? Time to 100 the game. No way. Trouble of any sort is the last thing I want to get home to after a long day at work and a trip to the bar. And when I see Hala near prostrate, I can only feel dread. She twitches and sees his body wound. Wound and coiled right before thrashing, shuddering and shaking. Like a woman possessed, her mouth was open and her eyes rolled to the back of her head. What is he talking about? Where is this happening? It has the hallmark signs of a seizure. The symptoms are similar enough. And that knowledge, the fact that I know this, only makes me feel worse. Any anger I had caused by our disagreement on parting ways, no matter how temporary she claimed me to be, disappeared. The alcohol in those days that I felt was brushed aside as I ran to help her. Wait, was it when at the end of uh, Hannah's uh, chapter? When he found her freaking out? Yeah. Maybe? I didn't know she had a seizure, though. Hmm. None of that matter at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. This part is cute. Yeah. But to hold her close is all I can do while she thrashes about. I know this is wrong. I'm not supposed to hold her down. Yet I do it out of instinct, a reflex even. I'm terrified of hurting her, but I see no other way to keep Hannah for, from hurting herself. To be fair, if I was attacked by a ghost, I would have seizure-like symptoms as well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It takes a lot to keep myself from running off to get help when she needs me here. And it takes everything I have to keep myself intact. When she says my name, I realize that the seizures have stopped. But that doesn't make the dread go away. Please! What happened here? Who did this to you? I don't know. I'm so, so sorry. The sight of her tear streak face is enough to twist the knife in. It does not help that I'm as lost as she is right now. And all I can say is... Shh, it's alright. You're safe now, Hana. You're safe now. It takes a bit to go through the house with my inebriety self. That's even made worse by the fact that I had to carry a nearly unconscious person as well. I was about to give up too until... Up until... Shroken uh, shows up to lighten the mood. Oh, I pronounced that wrong. It's German. It's fine. 
He quietly takes her from you without question and brings her up to the bedroom. Another servant? It could be, uh, maybe that's Johannes' last name? Oh, yeah, you're right. And me? Well, I couldn't bring myself to follow. Not right now. Not while I'm drunk and rattled by what had transpired. It's a miracle I was able to help at all. So here I am, sulking in a portal chair with a glass of wine in hand. I can't even remember what particular vintage it is as I practically did not care right now. Because when you're already drunk and still have problems, even more alcohol should help. <laughs> He's so funny. Oh my god. He looks so weird. Oh my god, he's... he's bright. Of course, the butler chooses now to appear and be unhelpful. You know what actually solves all problems? Death. But it is not recommended. <laughs> Alcohol isn't a true solution either. It's worked well enough for me. <laughs> I'd like to believe that I get my best ideas while I'm thoroughly hammered. Not everyone might agree, but they can't really do anything about it, can they? With a F ton of money comes great power. Sometimes res responsibility. How dare he ruin the, the Spider Man quote? Yeah. And with, with that responsibility comes a lot of reason to get drunk. I swear these two together could make a comedy duo. Yep. <laughs> of course, I can just tell a responsibility to sort of if I was feeling reckless. Christ, I must be really drunk if I'm thinking in circles. I just need something to focus on and I should be fine. How is she? Is she alright? <laughs> His voice. <laughs> oh it's weird God. how the, the sprites that they're using for him right now look so different than when he's talking to other people. Yeah. If panic crept into my voice at a question, I don't let it show. It would be a show of weakness to be so puzzled to show so much concern of a woman who is going to put me aside. People like him who work for me, I trust with business but not with myself. Never with that. Only Hana has come so close. Only she has truly seen the man beneath the facade. Only her actions can warn me so. Sleeping. Aside from a few bumps and bruises, she seems to be fine. A maid is watching over her for now. It is best not to leave her alone. But if I may ask, what happened? I was in the gardens when I heard screaming. Did you... No, it wasn't me! I'm quick to be on the defensive. I may be capable of a lot of horrible things, but I will never harm her of all people, no matter how angry I may become. I will never lay a hand on her, her, her. I, I didn't do anything. I wouldn't do anything like that. I don't even have a reason to. <laughs> he sounds so weird while he's drunk. <laughs> You don't consider her wanting to be a part as reason? It is it. Well, it is. I, I don't want to talk about it right now. But <laughs> what happens was I got her... She was seasoned in the kitchens. Is she ill? Not that kind of doctor. But I've already scheduled your physician for a house call tomorrow morning. We'll still have to monitor her as soon as she wakes up and... Why does he sound like Trump? Ugh. Oh god, things are coming back to me. I need a drink. 
Dude, really? you're already you're still drunk. drinking. Why, <laughs> yes, it seems to be the bloody best time to be drinking. I'm allowed, aren't I? After all, I've just found my wife having a seizure, and I shouldn't give two shits about it. Not when she's about to leave me. Well, you Kim. What I do? God, goodness, I do. Achievement a lot of smash drunk. <laughs> a big generous gulp just makes it so that the taste of cherries, raspberries, and strawberries wash over my tongue. A thing too sweet considering is the severely earthy aroma. A wine's vineyard season red isn't really something to scoff at. I've had many good memories with this particular drink. This particular bottle, in fact, was a gift. Okay, so we're at the one hour mark. And we're going to take a little break in case you guys need to stretch, get some water. And when we come back, I will take over reading. Yeah, because I need some water. So be right back, guys. Bye -bye. Okay, I'm back.
Okay, signs back. All right, so I did say I would do an accent for this. And since he's drunk, I think I'll attempt a drunk British accent. <laughs> it's probably going to end up sounding like uh, the Skulkin Brothers. That's probably what I'm going to do. <laughs> It solves the path as Lady Blarnot had given it to me for, to forget. Yeah, I'm going the Skulkin Brothers route, that's what I'm doing. All the same, when I took this bottle of a Pinot Noir, it is just a means to an end. I will probably have to finish the whole bottle to get drunker than I already am. But no, she doesn't need to be taken care of. If she wants her time apart, she'll have it. It'll break my heart to just let her go, but she deserves this much, doesn't she? We both deserve this much. She's at her uses. Wow. Rude. She's done a lot for me in the seven years we've been together. I pursued her at first for the money. It was supposed to be strictly business. There might have been a time too when I considered taking her out of the picture so that I can deal with the money as I pleased. Holy crap! He was considering killing her? Oof. He is a psychopath. I had planned to manipulate her and I feel horrible thinking about it. But along the way I changed, if only for her. Perhaps my father would scoff, tell me I've gone soft. Maybe I have, does it matter? Seven long years. It had its ups and downs and it certainly hasn't been a perfect marriage. We had our fights, who hasn't? But those small moments where we could just laugh and be our happy selves were always magical. They made all these years worth it, and I had seen many more years to come. So where did I go wrong? I've loved only two women in my life. Mother dear, bless her soul. And Hannah, who has been my sunshine for so long. Losing her, I fear that I might become more like my father. Had Damien Wright stayed with mother or any of the other numerous women he's had a child with, would he have been less of an embittered shell of a man? Would having a darling love in his life make him a better person? Perhaps it is bias of me to doubt so. I don't think I can ever see the old man in a favourable light. I'm just surprised that you're not afraid. She might be leaving with delicate information. Oh, she might know something. But if she hasn't done anything with the knowledge for this long, I don't think she would do anything now. If she had even an inkling of what I've done, what I'm capable of, she'll know it's not a good idea. Hana's a smart woman. Smart, kind, hard-working, generous, loyal. I can go on and wax poetic about her if I had any talent with the stuff. Why don't you sit down and have a drink with me? Don't worry, it's not poisoned or anything. <laughs> That's... Uh, I don't know. I don't think I would trust that at all. Lonely? Oh, I suppose there's no harm. With a shake of my head, I'll procure another glass and pour some of the red wine. Watching the red liquid is fascinating all on its own with my muddled brain, that I barely notice sloshing some of it and staining my soup. It'll be an utter bugger to clean, so I'm glad that it isn't my problem. Handing it over, I can't help but look up at the ceiling and let out a sigh. My eyes, damp, glaze over, though I won't let it go further than that. <clears throat> Raising my own glass for a toast, I clear my throat. We drink to... 
Do we really need a reason to? <laughs> the world is messed up. <laughs> yep, it is. <laughs> Welcome back, Tide. Also, do we more like the uh, England land rather than the Skulking Brothers? Oh, I don't think I could do England. Ah, uh, that's that's okay. Yeah, I don't I think can... I could do it. <laughs> I'm already imagining it as uh, your uh, fucking. The super drunk England. Yes. War, terrorism, famine, poverty, loved ones and love lost. The world is a cesspool. Might as well be drunk if we're going to drown in it. A <laughs> bit less eloquent than your usual speeches, but... Zum Wohl. <laughs> a sip. A gulp. Refill. Rinse and repeat until the bottle of Veln has barely a fifth left. I must have drunk most of it because I barely see Shrock and take a sip after his first glass. It certainly feels that way. I don't even think I can stand up let alone walk. I'm all legless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mind just feels so funny and everything else is equally hilarious. Bloody hell. I think I can make out faces of a bald man on the wallpapers. With the butler also standing up, he looks like a skyscraper from where I'm seated. Jesus Dang. Christ, I have Sasquatch as a butler. <laughs> I have a great alcohol tolerance, so this, how, seeing how I'm a giggling wreck right now is, I seem really bad. If there is any sober part left to me, it'd probably shrivel up and die just thinking of the hangover that I'll come in the morning. Yeah, Luke is like the most complex character because he's really funny and you know he has a soft side when it comes to Hana and Kylie. But then he's also so bad. And when we just read about his background, I mean, it makes sense, you know, because he had to grow up so rough. But he's such a jerk. It's fascinating. But I can't help but get distracted at the sight of moonlight peeking through the curtains. Shiny and shimmery and absolutely splendid. Oh my god, that's such a reference to Disney. It is? Yeah, oh, wow. that's a reference to um, A Whole New World, the song. A Whole New World? What? With uh, Aladdin and Jasmine, and they're on the carpet ride, and I think they literally say "shining, shimmering, splendid." Oh, I didn't, I didn't uh, watch the Disney version of Aladdin. Oh, okay, yeah, that's they're just copying it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the knife brought calm, it is the moon that always enamored me so. It is a second sun, but just as beautiful as my sunshine. I want to go out and look at the moon. Mommy, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> Muta, I am not. I ain't your mama, boy. <sighs> Don't tell me I have to carry you upstairs to bed. You know, Hana, she, she told that photo man that I was a trying husband. I can't even. Oh, he's jealous. The nerve of them, right? He g goes and takes her out shopping, and they give me lip service in return. I bet they were talking shite while they were in the store spending my money. That's not your money, it was Hana's money. Am I a trying husband, Joe? Yes. I wouldn't yeah. know. You're not my husband, are you? He's saying, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a trying dumb cop when you are this drunk. Yeah, tell him. Yes. I didn't even do nothing. I did my best to behave decent. Whiskey and Mint are just good friends, that's all. And that Rochelle woman's baby isn't mine. I swear, I wouldn't. I couldn't love any other woman than Hana. Hana must be so tired. I'm a brat, aren't I? She said as such. I don't want Hana to leave me, Joe. Oh, God, she's the love of my life, you know? 
I'm a shite human being without her. I should... You're a shite human being even with her. Flowers. Lots and lots of flowers. All of the flowers. <laughs> Enough to make the Queen's Gardens look like a fucking dumpster fire in comparison. All well and good. But you are not achieving any of that while you are lying on the carpet. Now, if you can lift your skinny ass and work with me. Eins, zwei, drei. But I don't want to go to bed. The moon is so pretty tonight. I should just let you sleep on the ground, Bratwurst. <laughs> yes, leave him there. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Luke left Hana in Johannes' care after the incident at the kitchen. Pissed off at the recent events and a possible divorce looming at the horizon, he dedicated the rest of his day to getting hammered, stopping only after his butler intervened. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty face from day to day. Come on, Mommy, wake up! I want to be in that play. Mommy, wake up! You promised that you'd help me practice my lines today. The auditions are tomorrow, so I have to practice. They really should have just let Luke's voice actor voice the younger version of him. It sounds weird that it's clearly Hana. The last syllables of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools. The way to Dusty. M mommy are you... Okay, now that he's not drunk, I'm not gonna do that annoying voice anymore. <laughs> I choke back a scream and wake up in a cold sweat. With my heart pounding in my ears, it takes a while to remember where I am. In the dark and cold of the room, one can't fault me for feeling ill at ease. It isn't as bright as the penthouse, and the renovations did little to change how old it feels. We've been here for less than a week. It'll take a bit more time to adjust. It's hard to feel cozy, though, when I'm bloody freezing. Nudging the lump of fabric next to me, I sigh. It's cold. Don't hug the sheets, Hana. I don't think that's Hana. I feel like that might be the ghost. Yeah. She always did this, though it hardly bothers me. Growing up, I was lucky to have something to use as a mattress. I'm not the one who grew up accustomed to Egyptian cotton with a thread count of 800. Besides, the warmth that Hana exuded on her own is usually enough to keep me sleeping through the night. The temperature tonight must be something else with how chilly it is right now. I must be considerate. After all, the poor dear is... ill. Though I loathe to think about what has just transpired. Don't make me pull those sheets off you. Oh, that blanket is large enough to cover an elephant. You need to share. It takes a while. What was that, honey? Apologies. I'm just in the loo, so if you can give me a moment. There's no sign that they'll be moving where they lie. With care, I go for a knife hidden under the side of my bed. It would be foolish of me to instigate anything while I'm unarmed, after all. To pull back the covers would be a more difficult affair, because reaching out to uncover who was underneath, I have to prepare for anything and assume the worst. Wow, his brain! Like, he quickly was like, oh wait, if Hana's in the loo, then that's not Hana, so there's someone dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, that was quick, bro. I give you props for that. Mm-hmm. 
If I so much as see the nozzle of a gun, it is going to be a murder tonight. I know they say not to bring a knife to a gunfight, but I think I can sink a blade in his liver faster than he can point and aim. Damn. I see the rise and fall of the sheets, though it could easily be mistaken as the fault of the breeze. I hear their breathing. A great sense of foreboding comes over me, making me hesitate for my plan. I should just get Hana and myself out of here, not look back, and let security handle it. That's what they're there for. Or maybe I should just man up. There's no way I'm risking the chance that inaction will put Hana in danger. But what's the worst that could happen, right? I've no reason to be afraid. There's no bogeyman under the bed. No monster in my closet. If anything, these things should be afraid of me. Right? I grab a fistful of sheets and throw them aside. Nothing. Ooh, that's creepy. Yeah. Luke woke up in the middle of the night with a scream and in cold sweat. Finding comfort in the warm body next to his, he tried to get back to sleep and forget the images play plaguing his mind until Hana called out from the loo. I don't think the body next to him was warm, but okay. Maybe the leftover uh, warmth from when when uh, Hana was in the bed. Maybe. You see, the way of the street didn't leave Luke yet. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. quick. He was ready. He was like, "Ah, oh, shit! Let me get a knife." <laughs> Nothing but a bunch of pillows stare back at me. Must be my imagination. I'd rather not think I'm going mad. It could very well be the stress getting to me. All this drama with Hannah. I've been doing well all these years, all things considered. I guess I do have a breaking point. But still, the world goes on, even if one cannot. And I must go along with it. I suppose a day off or two tomorrow wouldn't hurt. Rest, aside from a few hours of sleep, will be welcome. More than. But I can't shake off the unease. I dare say that I feel afraid, irrationally so, that something will come creeping and crawling from under the bed, even as I lay back down and close my eyes. The odd dreams don't linger, thankfully. But with the morning comes another disturbance. Both too loud and too sharp for my tastes. And I have very fine tastes. When the piercing rings of a doorbell reaches even the bedroom, I'm very much inclined to think the person who built this place lacks any sense of it. Perhaps the only good, the only thing good in this is that the ruckus has chased away the needling guilt from last night's commotion, if only temporarily. Still, it's a bloody annoying distraction. I can tell already that it is going to be a long day. It hasn't even started. Before the racket even lasts another minute, I'm peeling myself off the bed and heading straight for the main door. There will be a murder today if this doesn't let up. How quaint. It seems everything in this blasted universe is intent on getting in my nerves as of late. God and Bennett! Only a Nancy would knock at such an ungodly hour! In the first place, I shouldn't be the one doing this. This is why I hired a valet, for fuck's sake. Where's that damn butler when I need him? 
I'll be honest, if only for today. Yeah, I think it's Zack. With the mansion this quiet at this hour of the morning, it's easy to believe those little ghost stories might be real. But the only horror here is how long Hanna's patience with me will last after the incident at the party. Neither the deafening silence nor the biting chill spreading across every room in the place. There's no place for fear when another set of problems already burns that fuel. So I wait for another second. When no butler still answers my call, I simply yank the doors open myself, perhaps with more force than needed. Oh, there's Zack. And maybe it should be appropriately there, considering the person on the other side and the hour he dared appear on my doorstep. Even someone with half a brain knows not to disturb anyone this early. Brief confusion quickly gives way to anger, and before the bloody photographer can even get a word in, I'm hurling venom at him. It's less than he deserves, really. Hana will disapprove, scold me for treating the man with such disrespect if she hears me right now. She seems fond of him, after all. Treats him like a friend she's known for years. But she's not here, isn't she? What she doesn't know... You! Again! It's bloody six in the morning! What the hell is it now? Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oof. I don't think that's a good word. What does... What does it mean? I don't know, but I feel like it's a bad word. Let me see. Ninja? Um, is this another word? Like, another version of the N-word? Okay, so apparently it's a derogatory word for an unattractive or unpleasant person or thing. Oof. Oh, God. Oh, it's not a good time. Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't. This is still my home. My rules also apply to this place as much as Hana's do. Hi, Pharaoh. Hey, Pharaoh. You always come into the streams at the part of Luke being a racist prick. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the, the funny lines when uh, Luke was drunk. Yeah, we had a funny moment of Luke being drunk. You missed the scary confrontation earlier, too. <laughs> mm hmm. As simple as that. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. <laughs> oh good, you missed the <laughs> scary part. <laughs> it just so happens, it's also a person I will never take a liking to. No need for remorse. Come back when people are actually awake, or I'll call security on you. Well, he did say he could come back. <laughs> he continues shouting, even as I slam the door in his face. Some nonsense about the news lately, though I don't understand most of it. However, with the closed doors muffling the better part of it, and with no ears to listen, his tirade doesn't last too long. Eventually, he leaves, and silence once again fills the room, as it should. In hindsight, maybe I should also call for psychiatric services. He certainly sounds mental, just screaming like that. 
a suspicious man like him left roaming the immediate grounds. Nothing good can come of it. But if his presence will indeed bring a problem, a sign of bad things to come, I'll probably know soon enough. Worse comes to worse, Shrokin will take care of it, if need be. It's what I'm paying him for. In the meantime, the bigger problem at hand, a hangover. Maybe I'll have some absinthe to temper it, dog hairs, or some wine to help me get me back to sleep. It's still early. One glass won't hurt. Or two. Or three or four. <laughs> Whatever the case, I need to think. Whatever, wherever that will lead me to. Drinking while having a hangover? Mm. Yeah, people do that. I have heard, like, during a hangover that's really bad, sometimes if you take a little bit of alcohol, that helps deal with the hangover. It's almost like you're having um, a withdrawal from the alcohol, so getting a little more alcohol helps it. <laughs> but I, so I wouldn't weird. do that. Drink all the alcohol. He did last night. Trust me, he did. <laughs> it's nothing. Almost drank the whole bottle, even. Yep. Everything leads to nothing. Except for this pounding headache, as if my mind will burst at any time and leak out of my ears. My vision swims in and out of view. Oh, what about my shit? What was that sign? Was da. Oh, she's talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, my mom needs to sleep, and uh, I uh, said I'll try to speak uh, more quietly. Ah, okay. Well, we'll be finishing up in about twenty minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I did hear that eating greasy food is supposed to help with it. <clears throat> My stomach threatens rebellion with plans of making me throw up with little food I've taken in with how my mouth feels, like it's filled with cotton. One would think that the fact that I'm hungover would make me the grumpiest person in the room. But, as it is, my eyes move over to Hana, who is stirring sugar into her tea and scowling down at it, all the while as if it has just murdered a baby in front of her. Uh, of all things for you to mention. <laughs> she happens to be preggers with your baby and you don't know it. I wonder if uh, she'll tell him or uh, if he'll find out some other way. Right? I'm, I'm so curious. I have half the mind to bemoan my current state and make a fool of myself just to make her smile. And I'm rather good at bemoaning. Not that I would admit that. Why, I'm already adopting the posture of a whiny teenager as I speak, slouched forward with my cheek on the table. Oh, I'm dying! Oh, God, I'm dying! Hana! Johan's calling ambulance, please! <laughs> He's so dramatic. Oh, my God, yeah. they even have him crying. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God, he's so crying, yep. <laughs> Let it be known that I leave all my belongings to Hana right near Evans. Everything but 30,000 quid. But, oh, <laughs> I see a bright light. I see... A farm. Mother dearest, is that you? Little Lucille is on his way home. <laughs> this voice acting, my god. And the fact his name is Lucille just makes it better. Oh my I'm god, so I can't. But I must leave you, Hana. Cover my face. <laughs> I can tell the voice actor had so much fun. He did. He really did. Your eyes dazzle. I die young. That much I can manage through the hangover. 
a thing entirely of my fault, considering I'm twice drunk the night before. Another thing I will never admit. Really, it's a miracle I haven't accrued alcohol poisoning yet. Oh, stop being so melodramatic, Luke. Besides, you never lived in a farm. You hate farms. Honestly, Pharaoh, I would love to hear you having to voice some of these lines, just to hear what you would do. I think you would have fun with it, too. But at the same time, Luke is so evil um, that some of the bad stuff I don't think you would have been comfortable saying. Yeah. And you're we too hard you to the for a hangover. Yeah. Really? One would think you'd be used to it by now with how stubborn you are about your drinks. Dare I ask what the 30,000 quid is for, though? It pulls a small smile from her for a moment, but the pinched look on her face returns quickly enough. He lost a bet with Robert and Elise after a night of drinking at the crawl. 10,000 each. And another 10 to me. The sneer that makes its way on my face doesn't hold as much heat as it usually does. It's just a bit of friendly ribbing. Though I still wish he wouldn't tattle. Of course it was my fault for mentioning the money. It wasn't like anyone will notice thirty grand missing from millions, though. That's how much I spend on a normal weekend, uh, you rich bastard. Oh, must you be such a teacher's pet? I told you not to talk about it. <sighs> I'm having second thoughts about moving to the penthouse. If this is what you do when I'm not looking. <laughs> I've almost forgotten about that little arrangement, too. Yeah, Pharaoh, Pharaoh does a great job voicing villains and... and and fun side characters, so I think he would have done a really good job. I still think Ferro is wholesome. Too wholesome for the character. <laughs> you hear that, Ferro? You're wholesome. Even yeah. with the pervy jokes. <laughs> Shame. Hopefully, that's the reason why she's so intent on glaring at the table until its varnish peels off. The alternative would be sobering. It was that one time. I'm not a child in need of minding or mother hens. As much as I'd love for you to stay, you said you need some time to yourself. Don't let the fact that I lost a bet once make you think I have to be supervised. It wasn't. I'm just worried about you, Luke. I'd be less so if you actually sat up. Why are you worried about me? I'm more concerned about what your doctor told you. How did the house call go? I didn't want to intrude on in her privacy when the doctor arrived. A ridiculous sentiment considering I am still her husband. Yeah. Nah, I'm not that wholesome. Oh, you <laughs> are. There's a side to him you don't know. The dark side. Wait, he has a dark side? Yes. I'm oh sure. no. Do I want to know the dark side? <laughs> uh, I mean, I enjoy seeing the dark side. It's fun. Hmm. Now I want to see a stream of uh, Pharaoh's dark side on uh, Halloween. Who knows? I'll Maybe wait, he'll do but... it. Maybe he I'll will. Wait, but I have courses in the morning. I don't think I'll be able to join in the Halloween. <laughs> yeah, because it's on a weekday. I don't know if he'll do it. Maybe he'll do it on the weekend or something. Yeah. But it wasn't like I could have done any good being there. What with nursing a hangover and all. However, a part of me feared what would be said. Not to mention, I trust that Hana would tell me if it is something serious. Of course, it probably is something bad, and I would be a fool to hope otherwise. 
I found her having a seizure, for goodness sake. I should have rushed her to the hospital as soon as she awoke, but it was her insistence that kept me at bay. A cup of tea finds itself in my hands. An attempt to appease me, no doubt. But I don't bother to drink, let alone look up. If anything, I just press my forehead on the table to hide the childish pout on my lips. Not that this is any better. Just do it whenever you can. We'll, uh, we'll enjoy whatever you do do. I... it was fine. The physician took some of my blood, and he scheduled me for a few lab tests tomorrow morning. I've already called for a driver and attendant to accompany me, so there's no need for you to worry. And what? You'll just be leaving me behind then? And I don't think you should be going anywhere alone. You hate hospitals even more than you hate farms, Luke. And Kylie's coming for your play date tomorrow, remember? Relax. I'm taking Johans with me if it makes you feel better. Herr Dr. Hobbs asked that I keep her under observation for the time being. Naturally, I'll be reporting my findings at the hospital. Sitting up, I run a finger over the rim of my teacup and mull it over. I do hate the bloody place. I thought hiring Schrocken would have been enough for me to avoid the place. Apparently not. Bloody doctors and bloody sick people. I don't want to catch anything contagious. I can't even tell crying people to shut up if they get too annoying. Respecting their grief, my arse. Save for a life and death situation, I'd rather avoid the mass graveyard that hid beneath the sterile air and white tiles. I guess you two can go without me. But I can't believe how naturally you two conspire behind my back. Don't expect my help if those bloody doctors bleed you too dry. Vampires, every single one of them. Not as bad as lawyers and politicians, but close enough. Wow. You do know Carly will be upset when she finds out you're not here tomorrow. Again. She'll be happy enough to spend time with her fairy godfather, I'm sure. You're a good role model for her, despite your whining. No matter how many times Hana claims that whining is unbecoming of me, I never listen. It's not like anyone that matters is here to judge. Well, it's not like anyone else actually matters. I'll whine if I bloody well want to, and I'll be no lesser because of it. Of course, I will not tolerate another person's whining. Except perhaps for Hana, but she hardly ever does that. Even right now, I can see as a look of pain passes on her face, and her hand goes to her stomach. Yet she keeps quiet, not bringing it up or complaining. What should I do? Um... I don't think we would just need to call for an ambulance. That seems a little extreme. We could just yeah. ask if she's all right. Mm -hmm. Are you all right? Should we be concerned? Maybe we should bring you to the hospital now. Yeah, she liked that. <laughs> Look how evil he looks here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how high his re relationship with Rebecca is. Oh, holy. I just feel a little queasy, that's all. A bit more tea in me, maybe some more sleep, and I'll be right as rain. I've spent a lot of time around people who lie for a living, and I can't help but feel that there is more to it than just that. Yeah, she's pregnant, dude. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is just that she says, and I'm overthinking it. But I trust Hana will fess up before things can get any worse. She's never really lied to me before. Nothing big, at least. If you're sure, I'm just worried. You'll tell me if anything is wrong, right? You do know you can still trust me. That I do still care about you. I know that. I just... I'm just going to be moving out soon. Even if it is for a short while, 
You won't always be there for me. Did you finish packing before you... I understand if you haven't, and I won't blame you if you've changed your mind after what happened. You can stay until you feel better. I'm still moving. It isn't like you can't visit to check up on me. Although that does somewhat defeat the point. Luke, I'm a big girl. I'm going to get a checkup tomorrow, take whatever pills they tell me to get, and get over it. You really don't need to worry. I'm fine. Oh, I do so hate those words. I'll hide my scowl by taking a sip of the tea, fighting off the urge to hurl the cup at the wall. I'm fine, she says. A lie. Apparently, the sour disposition I have, one not entirely born from my hangover, is still obvious. Without saying a word, Hannah puts her hand on mine and squeezes it tight. Her hands are cold and clammy. Her grip is weak. I can see the small tremors that run along her shoulders and the paleness of her cheeks. She has yet to recover from what happened to her. She's not fine. And I'm not either. Fine. I don't need to like it, but fine. I don't think either of us really like it. But I do think it is for the best. Perhaps we should bring you back to bed. The sooner you are off your feet, the better. Is that some sort of roundabout way of saying that you want to sweep me off my feet and take me to bed? This isn't our honeymoon. I need rest, mister. I am aware that this is the farthest thing from our honeymoon. This isn't how things are supposed to be. Hana isn't supposed to leave. I'm not supposed to let her. And if she ever did leave, it's supposed to be on my terms. Everything is going wrong. But I respect her enough to let her have her space, as she so puts it. If divorce is brought up, however, well, that's another matter entirely. Really, now, you shouldn't have gotten up in the first place. Breakfast in bed exists for a reason. Come on, then. Back to bed you go. Are you going to carry me to bed, then? You're far too heavy for that. Johans could carry you, if you'd like. Can you blame me if I enjoy food too much? I can walk, thank you very much. I don't say a word as she clutches my arm to steady herself. Oh yeah, Pharaoh, this man is like a walking contradiction. He's funny, but he's evil. He's sarcastic. He's a jerk. He loves her. He cheats on her. It's, it's a mess. There's no protest as she uses me as a crutch while going up the stairs. Ah, oh, here it is. Uh, come Sunday morning, Luke woke up with a huge hangover to Hannah's utter displeasure. Regardless, she informed him of her plans to see a doctor back at the city, something her husband immediately worried about, which she allayed with gentle reassurances. But that's as far as I want to go. Judging by the light blush on Hannah's face, she's gotten self-conscious about it, too. Johans, look after her, and you stay in bed. I just need to... go out. I'll have plenty of time to be lonely in the mansion by myself when Hannah moves out. For now, I can go and stretch my legs. Fresh air, all that. Breathe. Grey skies loom over in the horizon. Though the sun fights for every precious minute it gets to stay. It'll rain again soon, with the wind bringing along the gloomy clouds normal to Luxbourne. Until then, it doesn't hurt to be out here for fresh air and sunshine. I walk to the gardens, what little of it there is at the moment anyway, and kneel by the daffodils. These were the first to be brought here and planted on my request. And, if nothing else, they brought in a sense of peace. They were my mother's favorites. 
Closing my eyes, I lift my chin up to welcome the light that shines upon me. And for a minute, I can imagine myself as one of the flowers, peaceful, blooming, and all too happy to stand in its warmth. Life would be much easier if we were all like flowers, wouldn't it? Wow, that's pretty deep for Luke. Yeah, so poetic. But I didn't step out here to get all philosophical. I have problems much more practical than figuring out the meaning of life, after all. Too many things have gone on these past few days. And I want to forget about them, even for just a moment. It's almost all saints, isn't it? To think I've almost forgotten. I speak the words absent-mindedly. The date means nothing to me, as I neither worship the religion nor have any graves to visit. After all, Mother was never given a proper burial. But it's a date as good as any for me to grieve. Otherwise, I would have done so every single day, crippling myself and shutting everyone else out. I can remember how the flames licked at her flesh, how it consumed her body until there was nothing left but ash. I stood there watching with the operator and a social service worker, though I could have been alone for all I cared. I felt alone. Stop making me feel bad for him! It was the most that could be done. No one would attend the funeral of a dead prostitute, let alone pay for it. All that is left of her, proof that she had lived, is her name written in the ledger of Luxborn Cemetery, a lighter, and me. Pulling out the lighter from my jacket, I can't stop myself from flicking it open to stare at the flame and to run my thumb over her name, Eleanor. All in all, it isn't much, but it's something. And it'll be wrong of me not to make something of myself when she would have given everything to make sure I can become anything I want to be. Feels like I'm stuck in a nightmare right now. What I would give to have you here by my side, Mother dear. To see you smiling at me. Alive and as beautiful as ever. I'm afraid I'm starting to forget what your face looks like. I've already forgotten the shade of your hair. Eleanor Chandler was a wonderful woman, though not everyone would have agreed. Not everyone had seen past her occupation, past her vices and her illness. All they saw was a poor woman who sold her body to make ends meet and had a bastard son because of it. They didn't see the mother who worked hard to put food on the table for me. The woman who gave and gave and gave to me while expecting nothing in return. She taught me the merits of hard work, but though I loved her so, I worked hard for myself. I would not be so foolish, so selfless towards people who would never give back. Right, Pharaoh? <laughs> I learned that from the father who plucked me out of an orphanage for his own selfish gain. I pocket the lighter before I can feel the urge to actually set anything ablaze. Considering my close proximity to the flowers, they would be the most likely victim of arson. Just the thought itself is blasphemous. Nevertheless, that doesn't save them from being picked. Just enough to make a bouquet of the things in honor of Eleanor. Would you be proud of me if you saw me now, Mother? <laughs> Maybe. You're always so forgiving. No matter what trouble I got into, more than I deserved. Especially now. It's been a while since I've talked to my mother like this. I've been thinking of both my dear parents far too much as of late, when I shouldn't. I have a future to look forward to, and the present to take care of. These memories of the past give me nothing but grief. 
the life of Lucille Mitchell Chandler should be nothing but a footnote in Luke Wright's non-existent autobiography. It's because of Hannah, isn't it? I worry that she is all too much like Mother, that it scares me, and the thought that I'm turning into my father is even more so. But even if history is so set to repeat itself, I'm not a child anymore. Content to sit aside, unable to do anything to help, and too inexperienced to think that the worst wouldn't happen. I have money to buy the best medicines and doctors if need be. She'll get better. She has to. And once we get over this little bump in the road, I can stop worrying. All will be right with the world. Unfortunately, my time alone is cut short, though. I... I think those flowers look beautiful, my lord. Who is this? The mm -hmm. parlor... The room where the lady stays for her tea. It could certainly use some. The voice is not familiar, though I'm not really one to remember such things. Um... Small talk. Hmm... Is this the ghost? Um... She looks yeah. normal! Yeah... She looks really pretty too, huh? Yeah. Going with her attire, I would say that she's one of the housekeepers. Strange, considering I've sent all of the staff but Johan is away. And her face, as, pre as pretty as it is, is unfamiliar to me. It would be a lie if I said that it didn't set me on edge. Most would say that I cared little for my employees. That isn't entirely untrue. However, I'd like to think I know the people who work for me, especially those who would roam my home, even if it's just a face and a name. Besides, I would remember a beauty such as her. So who is this? If she is someone impersonating a household staff to get in, she's doing a bad job of it. Didn't you get the memo? Are you new? Today is a day off. You aren't supposed to be here. I expect poor excuses and apologies the likes of her often give, but she merely smiles. Oh, oh, no. I've been a servant here since you first came. And I see no signs of lying, nor hear it in her words, yet they can't be true. But I find that I feel like I can relax. She has that sort of smile that makes one's kindness shine through, without words or action. It reaches her eyes, filling them with a strange sort of mirth, as if she's just thought of something very funny. Perhaps, had it been any other person, I would have interpreted, interpreted it as a deceitful grin. But, the curl of her lips and the shine of her eyes are too soft to hold any malice. She takes my silence as a sign that she can continue. And it's not like I feel any urgency to stop her. I'm not really in the mood for company, but I'm not adverse to it at the moment, either. Entertaining a beauty like her, even for a little while, wouldn't hurt. Ah, that's how it starts! It helps that she proves easy to listen to, despite how oddly she speaks. I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have bothered you. Look at me, talking to the master of the house without even asking for permission. What will the others think? If you'll excuse me, I'll just... I haven't driven you away yet, have I? And it's your day off. I don't see why we can't chat a bit. No, Luke, bad boy. 
Maybe it is turning into a hentai. Who knows, Pharaoh? <laughs> uh, of course. If that is what you wish. As, as long as it does not get you into trouble with, with the lady. To even take time for someone as lowly as me. No wonder that everyone under the mansion's employ is so fond of you. Hmm, I doubt that. Though it should have no longer been a surprise to me. You have always been such a... a kind and loving lord. Hmm. And then she says lord, which is a very old-fashioned term. I have to stop myself from calling her out on her shite. <laughs> It's almost as if she's talking about an entirely different man. I think she is. I think she's talking about somebody who used to live there, okay? I think she just sees you as someone who looks like him. No matter how big my ego gets, I know for a fact that I'm hardly in the running for Best Boss of the Year award. The only reason that most of my staff stay is because of the decent comp compensation. I'm not cheap. But if she wants to lay it on thick, I'll allow it. Who wouldn't want a beautiful woman complimenting them? I'm sure she'll be fine with this. We are just talking after all. Unless you had other things on your mind when you approached me. Oh, aren't you bold, Luke. The words leave my mouth before I even realize what I've said. I panic a bit. Though I can get away with picking up women out in the city, sometimes even out of the county, I've always taken care not to do so in my home or in my businesses. Not when it'll be so easy for Hana to find out about my infidelity through these channels. Though, seriously, I still don't see what the big deal about it is. Luke, you jerk. You you slept with her best friend and got her pregnant. That's not you being careful, okay? You idiot. Maybe he does a little bit <laughs> I don't know. I just have an itch I need to scratch. Ugh. Disgusting. I, I know it must be amusing to see a girl flustered for... For a man of your stature. But please don't say such things, my lord. I saw you alone and simply thought you could use some company. Thankfully, and I do count my lucky stars, it seems the woman takes it as a joke rather than the casual pass it was intended to be. So how are you liking your work around the mansion? The place is wonderful, but I imagine the upkeep is ungodly with all the rooms and whatnot. I don't even want to think about how many people are on the staff roster. Work is work, my lord. It is a way of living. A purpose from day to day. It is certainly far better than doing nothing or having no food to eat. The house itself is also beautiful. There's no lack of things to look at. I'm sure you've seen those books in the study. I... I can't read any of them yet, but... If given the chance, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't be thinking of those things. Especially when the rains... They might bring more work to us soon. It will definitely be much more... More difficult when it returns. Idling about is the least I should be doing. I guess you can put it that way if you want to be brutally honest about the whole thing. And the rain shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully. Maybe. If a little dreary, at least she doesn't beat around the bush. I like the honesty. Many would bemoan their status as a household staff, as a janitor or other menial role, and believe themselves to be for greater things. And I would not begrudge the idea that one can always get better. But one shouldn't be so discontent with what they have, either. The rain is something I simply must get accustomed to, if I am to live here. I've not spent long in this place, after all. But I have been told that it has rained in this nation since a mother's time, and their mother's time. There is little we can do about it. 
I am just glad to have time in the sun, even for a short while. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> really, these sunny days have been welcome, though I can't imagine they'll last for long. <sighs> Sometimes I just want to pack my things and leave for somewhere like, say, the Bahamas or whatnot. Get some sun and surf. But certainly, you will return for us, won't you? This is your home, after all. Your people, they won't be pleased if the master of the house leaves. Of course, I can't very well leave my businesses hanging here, can I? <laughs> I just wish I could actually trust people enough to go on vacation without taking work with me. I've also got to get back here if I ever want proper meals. A proper pudding is something you'll never find out there. The woman nods in understanding, and I must say that she makes for a fine listening ear. Though what she says next gives me pause, whether she meant for me to hear it or not. And good tea. Uh, fr from what the cook has been telling me, I've yet learned how to prepare one. Perhaps once I do, it would endear the lady of the house to me. I never expected her to be so unkind after what she did for me. Yeah, that's not Hana. Uh-uh. Though it's only if one catches her in a foul mood. I wish I knew how to avoid her anger. I highly doubt she means Hana. That woman rarely has a mean bone in her body. And when she actually is nasty towards someone else, it's usually deserving enough. Much like with that Rochelle woman. Hell, she even tolerates Harvey for me, even if she did admit that she doesn't quite like the man. She must mean the head housemaid, right? I have to laugh at that. Not that I have room to speak, I don't deal with her myself anymore, though even Johannes has had a few choice words about the head hag. She's just been under the right employ when she was also house head housemaid for my father. And if anyone's not going to get along with someone, it'd be that crotchety old woman. I don't even remember her name. But the woman had been this strict upstart biatch who took one look at me, her master's bastard son, and turned her nose up, as if she were better by mere consequence of birth. That, and she absolutely loathed my very existence. Perhaps the rumors had been true. She had a miscarriage while bearing another one of dearest father's children, and she saw me as an obstacle to her being granted a better standing in life. I remember that much, at least. The only reason I haven't sacked her yet is because of her competence. Also, because working under my household makes her absolutely miserable. Her resignation made impossible by her pride. Nobody really gets along with that woman. I think everyone just tolerates her because of how old she is. I mean, not to be rude or awful or anything, but she's at the age where she'll be pushing Daisy soon enough. <laughs> is she? Really, my lord? I'm sure the lady is much younger than that. You guys are having two completely different conversations. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of a joke, you know, in the Romanian shows. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thought of tormenting the young and beautiful gives her reason to live. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that way, though I feel sorry for her. One's life should not be wasted away on hatred and anger. It is never good for the heart or the head to always carry ill thoughts. But at the least, you are here for us. We are certainly so lucky to have a lord like you. The lady even more so. The gods smile down on her. Though, if I may be honest, she is... she is to be envied. Even when I have my suspicions about her, she's just so easy to talk with that I've forgotten. I don't know who she is, and if she's actually one of the household staff, that would explain why she would so easily give obviously wrong statements about my character. Though if she is here for malicious reasons, she would have done more than do small talk with me by now, wouldn't she? I have so many questions. Perhaps curiosity will kill this cat. 
It's strange that I've never seen you before. What's your name? You do not remember? I don't believe you've mentioned it, or am I missing something? You still cannot comprehend it, can you, my lord? Her answer chips away at the good mood I'm starting to get into. I have every right to be angry at the cryptic response. She threatens insubordination with her very presence alone. But instead of hurling vitriol at the woman, I take a deep breath. I do not want my mood ruined further than it already is. Not right now when I can let my temper take its course another time. Whatever your name is, and no matter how long you've been working for us, that does not change the fact that you shouldn't be here. I'll call you a cab to bring you to the city if you want. Shouldn't I? What if I do not wish to leave? Oh, here we go. I merely desire to stay by your side and serve. Is that such a deplorable thing? Her gaze sends chills down my spine. It's too easy to see the devotion, the obsession in her eyes. Not the good sort, either, as her scrutiny makes me feel like I'm laid bare. The offness of her presence is all the more palpable with the feeling of bugs crawling on my skin and the silence that makes it seem as if the world has stopped. Any friendly atmosphere we might have had going for us is completely forgotten. Danger. A small part in the back of my mind screams, the part that has kept me alive all these years. And, in hindsight, I'd be stupid not to take heed of it. But I've grown arrogant, complacent, and content to hide behind wealth and power. Yes, it's a, a deplorable thing, as you said, because I'd like to be alone now. Thank you very much. If you didn't want the day off, you should have reported to your superior. This is utterly unprofessional of you, and I shall be issuing complaints. In fact, if you know it's good for you, you should start looking for another employer. Ooh, you gonna piss her off. It's at my threat that the smile on her face turns tight. I see. It escapes you still. This is... unfortunate. How despairing that this misery must go on. But maybe, if you come with me, I can help you. I can... When she reaches out for me, I recoil with a hiss. How dare you lay your filthy hands on me without my permission! I am not going anywhere with you! Now step back and walk away before I have you forcibly removed! Oh my god! Go on. As if a switch had been flipped, the woman's expression turns horrific. Although that may very well be the understatement of the century. She herself turns horrific. Her presence is suffocating, bearing down on me. I'm rooted on the spot, through no fault of my own as my fear paralyzes. You are too much like that vile woman. Poisoned by her rotten influence and her filthy words. But that can be remedied now that you're here. Oh, how we have waited to welcome you home. Come, my lord. The house beckons. When her fingers grasp the back of my coat, I finally find it in me to break off into a run. I can still feel her eyes on me as I run back to the house. Whew, that was intense. Mm -hmm. Alright, wanting some alone time and fresh air, Luke excused himself, lingering in the gardens as he remembered the memory of his late mother. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appeared by his side, striking up a conversation with him. It was all pleasant at first, until... All right, but we will be leaving this episode right here. Uh, sorry, I actually intended to end early, but then she came and I got really sucked into that. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, thank you, Sign, for...